Hey guys, this is Nito King, and ah, water, source of all life, nectar of the gods. That's right, I'm playing King's Quest V in French because this is the floppy version that I have. Good old collection. I love this part too. They even translated the open sesame into French. I don't know why, but for some reason I always figured an important phrase like that would be left in English. Anyway, skip ahead to the bees here. You can walk around the nest, or hive, or whatever. You can pick up the stick. But if you try and take any honey, who gets killed by bees? Yeah, it just says. Don't annoy the bees too much. And here we are in the witch's forest, dropping our third gem on the ground without spreading honey. So the gnome comes along. Shoot! I missed! And then he runs away. So we're trapped in the forest without a way out. And predictably, the player is probably just going to wander around, figuring that there was absolutely no point to that whole gnome and jewel sequence. I figured at the very least I'd show you the complete layout of the forest in case any of you guys got disoriented during the actual playthrough. Plus, I was looking for a spot where the spider would drop down and kill you. I think it's supposed to be in this screen, but I never found it. So instead, I'll show you the other death that results if you get trapped in this forest and don't have a way to get out of it. Now it'll happen in this screen if you walk past those toothy plants over on the right side. But the same thing happens in just a few seconds. Pretty much any place where you see those carnivorous plants. They're just decoration until you get stuck. And then they're a handy way to make sure you don't stay here forever. I guess you could say that Graham makes a vine snack. I'm serious, that's absolutely terrible. Alright, so we'll jump ahead to once we've actually gotten out of the forest in the little gnome's place. And you can climb back up the ladder and get back into the witch's forest this way. Although, honestly, there's not a lot of point to it, because at this point you can just walk back in through the entrance. But this is the only way to get out. And returning to the gnome's little mine here, I suppose, is pretty much the only way you can actually do anything here, since well, the first time you visit, it's a cutscene. But you can walk up what looks like a little staircase here. Can't use the hand on it. So what is there to do in here? Watch for falling objects. Actually, that one's kind of funny. Alright, so here we are out on the snowy mountains. Let's try sliding down this path without using the sled. I think it's funnier this way, but... He takes a couple tries to actually find his way to the end of the path. And then right at the end, oh, he falls off, and then the path collapses. That last step was a mistake. But I mean, he falls first, and then it breaks. It's kinda like insult to injury. Kinda. So let's go ahead and do this the recommended way with a sled. This is my favorite music in the game, and yet in this version, I hate it. it hurts the ears, doesn't it? Oh. Shoot, my sled is broken. Yeah, well, I'm pretty sure we can just patch it up with, I don't know, a cloak. And now we have Graham in a boat. And then the sled turns into a sea monster. To Lisa from Zero. I mean, they, they even translated this debug message. 
And once we clear it, then the serpent just pushes him off. I have to imagine that was kind of like a big middle finger from the programmers to the QA guys. Hey, just seeing if you QA guys are paying attention. Like they did in the space bar, which then killed everybody. I gotta LP that game sometime. So we skip ahead a little bit to where the eagle is. I mean, this is the very next screen. Just to show that you can give him the pie instead of the meat. And he eats it. Every bite. And this is exactly the same conversation that you saw in the main Let's Play. I was kind of hoping he'd say something like, Gee, you know, I would have preferred meat, but I suppose I can eat just about anything when I'm starving this much. But no, it's exactly the same conversation. But we're just as screwed, so what else are you going to do? I love the little I in the text box. And we skip ahead again to the beach. We'll take a look at the boat. It just says the old dilapidated boat is sitting on the dry, sandy beach. Absolutely nothing about there being a hole in the boat. There is no way to figure out that there's a hole in the boat, except to sail it and die, or just randomly click the beeswax on it and say, hey, I wonder what happens if I do this. Which I think you kind of have to do anyway. I mean, if you're not going around clicking everything in your inventory on everything you see, you're not doing your job. So let's go sailing. Wait, what's this? Graham has suddenly lost all his strength. Use Crispin's magic wand, baguette in French for some strange reason, and speak the spell to give Graham his strength back. Well, let's see, uh... Gotta click on the letters. Uh, maybe those. Nope. And I'll try the same four letters again. Maybe by coincidence it'll work. Nope. Try it one more time. Nope. What's this? Graham isn't strong enough to move the boat. And you never get another try. You are just screwed at this point. Which is why I saved my game right before. Of course, we gotta do the beeswax thing again, but... Yeah, it's not such a big deal. He's gonna become quite a, uh... boatsman by the time this is all done. So let's do this the right way. Actually, pull out the manual, look at the symbols. The little Anki thing is a D, and then the cross over there is an O... The big rectangle thing is an E. And the arrow with the two hash marks across it is B. So the magic word is Doeb. You just remember that. If you ever need some strength, Doeb. You tell Cedric to jump in the boat. More like flying, I think. But Cedric isn't very talkative on the seas. And Talking to yourself again, Graham? I kind of like that line, too. Nothing much to do here, so we'll skip ahead again. Here's a familiar place. Good old Harpy Island. Of course, the point of my having recorded this scene is a little bit less significant when it's all in French and nobody can understand it. But I figured I'd show off exactly what those harpies say if you just let them talk and don't try to escape from them. Granted, if you just try to run away, then they'll eat you right away without finishing their conversation. Escaping from them, obviously, you know, you've seen what happens when you do that. Otherwise, where'd you find that man, Minata? We found him on the beach. Doesn't he look tasty? Mmm! And so on and so forth. I don't know, he's not my type. What do you think, Krulina? I can't believe I'm doing an LP where I'm reading off the screen. I think he's too old and tough. I want something young and tender. Oh, don't be so picky. I'm tired of fish. It's been months since we had a man to eat. That's not true. I saw you steal a man about a week ago. 
Oh, he doesn't count. He was already mostly eaten when I found him. Ah, well, this one at least is fresh. Eh, uh, well, girls, I'm ready to eat. How about you? Oh, you're always ready to eat. That's why you're so fat. That's not true. It is true. I mean, if you haven't figured out by now how to escape from them, you're just a dumbass, really. Oh, quit arguing, girls. Let's eat. And finally, we've run out of time. I hate to have to say this, but Graham is dead. The game over message no one should ever have to see. So let's pretend we actually did get away from them successfully. And we'll move on. the screen. Thank you. Hey, what's that? Oh, poor Cedric. He's all injured and killed and lying on the ground. See ya, Cedric. Or not. I was pretty sure that if I returned to that island, the harpies would come and kill me. But they didn't, so I just cut out all the sailing, which... As you can see, this isn't running at quite the speed I might like. And skipped ahead to meet Henry Toothrod, or whatever we've decided to call him. And see what our conversation looks like if we don't have a dying Cedric along with us. He just wants to know how to get to Mordax Island, because he seems to be stuck here. All the same stuff that we saw last time we talk to this guy. Hand over the shell. What is it? So, can you please tell me how I can get to Mordax Island? And it's too loud out here. Let's go inside where I can hear better. Slightly different graphics because Graham isn't carrying Cedric at this point and has to duck to get his head inside. And now, what was it you wanted to tell me? And I tried to skip through these text boxes quickly. Because it's exactly the same thing that you say after he's done healing Cedric if you brought him back. But I have to watch this at the speed of the cutscene. Which is terrible. Watch the whole conversation, try to see if there's anything new said other than what we're familiar with. Not a dang thing. So, finally, when he says, let's go outside and I'll find you someone to take you directly to the island, then I just decided to skip ahead. Probably about the worst spot, because I didn't realize how far ahead it would skip. And Cedric would have had a couple lines as we were approaching the island. Check this out. Graham doesn't say anything about the stinky old fish when he picks it up. Possibly because he doesn't have anyone to speak to. Possibly because anything that he says at this point is pointless because we're completely screwed and can't complete the game. Otherwise, this is all pretty familiar stuff at this point. Take care of these things like Bastion from the NeverEnding Story didn't. Oh, I'll well, just run really fast and maybe they won't hit me. And it's exactly the same thing except instead of Cedric going, Oh, oh, oh Graham, this place is scary! Oh, look out! A poison is dead end! Oh, Graham, I wouldn't go down there! It's dark and scary! And this is where Graham would be telling Cedric to stay behind, keep a lookout. And that's really all that's different. Inside, same experience in the palace. So we'll skip this part of the experience and jump right to here. Oh, I've put the wands on the machine and now we toss the cheese into a Mordax fondue pot. 
Now, for some reason, I don't know if it has to do with me not having brought Cedric with me or not, but I didn't see Mananan the whole time I was in the castle. I went through all the stuff, made sure to get the sack of peas empty so I could catch him before the first screen where he could possibly appear, which is the uh, southern end of the dining room. You know, did everything I could to make sure I didn't get stuck anywhere or get spotted before I had the tools to cancel the alert as such. Nothing. No sign of banana. So if I had Cedric with me, I could potentially have beaten the game with fewer than full points. Not that that's really an accomplishment. But it gave me something to talk about while the machine was doing its thing. So, Mordak's baguette is limp and useless, and Crispin's baguette is full of life. I don't know how they managed to call a magic wand a baguette. I always thought that was a kind of bread. And poof. What's happening here? This line I love. I'm gonna take care of you, Espeste Paul. That probably is the way you say swine in French. But it's just weird. There was nothing you could do, Graham. And that's the biggest hint the game gives you that you probably should have brought Cedric with you. Well, hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.